Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Most annoying part is when someone wakes you up the moment Fajr ends, but then you didn't get to drink water or enjoy suhoor or anything, so you're sitting there like kind of sick. You're like, bro, how am I going to be up for Fajr? Which is, alhamdulillah, it's great. But then you're just deep down, you're like, I couldn't wake up a minute or two before so that I could enjoy a little bit of water for the long day ahead. But it's okay. Allahumma barik. We'll get rewards for it, inshallah. Right, Omar? So yeah, so that day I edited a podcast and it's on the page of go check it out. Lovely podcast with Sheikh Hashanawi. And then got into reading the Quran, doing Masih Bukhari, Athqar, and then got to work, alhamdulillah. <laughs> So I always enjoy having fun with my coworkers and having good relations with them. And again, as you see, like it's important to always have a smile on your face with everything you're doing. And yeah, alhamdulillah, I got home, finished reading the juz, and just worked on editing the minor signs video that I had uploaded. And again, it is really one by one thing. You know, you add the sound effects, you add every little thing. And inshallah, alhamdulillah, like all the little things do add up. And, you know, it's good. And as you see, like, the sun was going to start to set here. So it's always fun to, like, watch, like, a time lapse of seeing it all. But, yeah, then I got back to something else. So, alhamdulillah, I just finished on with the minor signs video that I really wanted to do. Honestly, sitting down and editing on a PC is a lot faster. And I recommend it to anyone who's getting into content creation is to kind of invest in a mouse, having things, and not just working off the laptop. Because my hands definitely hurt a lot less. But yeah, we're gonna go pray Asr, inshallah, and then see what I'm gonna do for food and see if I can make something good, you know? See what the fam is making and then have family dinner and then pray Tarawih tonight, inshallah. You know, like Ramadan Chronicles, you are gonna wake up with less energy. You aren't gonna have the same motivation to do work. But as long as you're doing your spiritual tasks, you're locking in Islamically and your spirit is cleaning, that's the main purpose. That's the main focus. So yeah, you're, you might be a little more tired. Yeah, not having water throughout the day to hydrate and keep your body up and peppity up and going. Yeah, it sucks. But remember, it's all for Allah. Earlier that day, you know, we had to make them poke bowls. And yeah, this is here setting up everything. And me and my brother really enjoy it, like poke bowls as well and making these like incredible bowls and i mean me personally i really do enjoy eating them too and we kind of did a couple things obviously added the avocado corn cherry tomatoes mango cilantro and obviously little sauces and spices all up in the food and it feels so fresh it's healthy it's enjoyable and again obviously being egyptian you were going to eat egyptian cuisine here and there but nothing wrong with also eating a little bit of different types of foods and different types of cuisine so you'll get to see i guess the preparation here and there of it going and again i'm not no five-star chef or culinary expert but I know how to make a good taste in meal sometimes. And it's something fun to do with my brother as well, where we try new recipes, try new things. And it was so fun to like build it together and like watch my parents. And obviously like when you have like Egyptian parents and people who have never seen like, huh, raw fish, what are you doing? Why are you not grilling this fish? Are you not gonna put it on the heat? But one by one, you know, they start realizing like, I guess maybe this is something that's tasty or something that's good. But Alhamdulillah, I love doing it. I enjoy eating them. And yeah, Alhamdulillah, it's, see the process of it <laughs> being built and everything. If you guys have any stories of like, I guess, trying out new foods with your parents, please let me know in the comments because I would love to hear them. Because honestly, it happens a lot where like, I guess like Arabian parents or like cultured parents from immigrant backgrounds, they really tend not to like trying all these different things. But yeah, that's for the final product. And take a look about me and my brother like oh snap we forgot the edamame so then we one by one just <laughs> literally started cutting them up putting them all over and yeah enjoy watch us to guys enjoy it but definitely really was nice and we put this like green salsa on top like this green sriracha definitely was busting like it was so good and you literally see like the salad and stuff too that my mom and dad ate with like um i guess it's like okra and you put okra with the red sauce and beef chunks and stuff with white rice simple classic thing but yeah and after this we went to tarawih prayer and yeah as you can see there goes the bowl <laughs> We're Muslims, and the number of Muslims we have in America compared to the general population is very little. But what did the story of Ibrahim have to benefit with us being little population? Is that Ibrahim 
or any any place he went to, right? He kept his Muslim identity, meaning he was a practicing Muslim regardless, and that's how we should be in our lives as Muslims. Any place you go to, whether it be work, outside, to the park, to school, whatever it may be, is you have to be proud to be a Muslim. And you have to be proud to show others that you are a Muslim. And not to be fear of what people think about you. And the Muslim is strong, he holds that they strong. If you look at the time of the Sahabas, they were little, but they were proud to be Muslim. He said, oh, I am a Muslim. Even when all their family was against them. Meaning that we have to translate Islam and be confident in our identity. And not to always be scared and to be worried that I'm a Muslim, right? I have to pray in public. I have to be in public. La kalla wallah. That's why I think that you should be happy. Allah blessed them with Islam and did not bless them. So you should be proud to be a Muslim. Because I know when Imam Ali Salam when all the people were against him, well, he was a young boy, and he proved them wrong. And they had to throw him into the fire, until Allah said to, to, to cool the fire. Don't be shy about your vision of Islam. Don't be scared to wear the love outside. And the, and the people that have the heart of the most are the sisters. And may Allah bless them, because they're wearing hijab. And people see that, the first thing they know is Islam. Right? And my message to the sisters is, don't be afraid to wear hijab outside. Don't be afraid, it's an honor. And the people are going to respect you when you respect yourself, anything in life. When people know that I'm about my Islam, people are going to respect you. But the moment you try to fit in, or you try to you know, be with the people, then people are going to be like, yo, this girl doesn't even want to wear hijab. This brother doesn't even want to go, go to the masjid. Why should I be a Muslim? But when they see that you're, you're proud, or as you say nowadays, standing on business, right? When you're proud and you do what you have to do, and you're proud to be a Muslim, people are gonna respect you. They may not agree with you, but they respect you. At your job, you tell your boss, listen, I gotta pray. Once you see you pray in public, people are gonna you know what? This guy's a Muslim. Coupled with how you behave as a good Muslim, people are gonna associate good manners with Islam. This brother in Ramadan, he brought me some cookies. He brought me some food. And he's fasting. Right? For Eid, right? You give me neighbor a little gift. It's a celebration. Give him a gift. Give it to your neighbor. Says Ramadan, I was breaking fast. Here's a special food for you guys. Right? Show people that what? I'm proud to be Muslim. You saw how the Prophet Salaam was. When all the odds were against him, what happened? He said, What? I believe in Allah. Right? And he gave doubt to his people. Like I mentioned last time, is not only do you, do you be proud to be a Muslim, but you tell others about Islam. Imagine guys, you live in a time where people are trying to say that they're animals. People say I'm a cat, I'm a dog, right? People are, are trying to have a right to be called animals. So why are we scared to go outside and wearing a thaw? Why is it not time to go and wear a dog and jilbab, right? Don't be scared of that, be proud of it. Right? A lot of times people don't even know the reason why you're wearing it. Sometimes they might have a question. They're just curious about it. They don't know why I'm wearing a thaw. How many times when, when I was in Canada, I'll be in a mall and it'll be a lot of time. I told you guys, listen, let's pray. But when they put jackets on the brown jackets, the guy will come up, and we'll pray in the mall. Some people come and ask me, what's that? One time I was, I was traveling to 2019 in Trinidad and Tobago. I was at Toronto Airport. So Salah time came and I found a corner. I prayed my Salah. Then a girl asked me, what's that you're doing? Today I was praying Salah, Muslim, I do A, B, C, D. It's full of doubt, people learn. But you have to be proud to be a Muslim. When people ask me, what's your name? Say my name is Muhammad. Don't say my name is Mo. Right? Say my name is Muhammad. Right? Just tell you what's your name. But be proud of them. And tell them who they are. Because people are going to respect you, like I said, when you respect yourself. And when people respect you, they're going to respect Islam. And when people respect you, when you talk about Islam, they will take it. But the moment you try to put yourself in an inferior position, 
people are not respecting you. And they won't, and they won't take Islam serious. When Salah comes, I gotta pray Salah. Right? You're in high school, you're in university, you're in work, you're, you're with your friends. But the Kameen is some, some, some pork, some salami. But we are this. No, it's okay, no problem. I don't do this. Right? I'm gonna come to you, let's go party, come, take a free jab only one night. But sister, we are, I will find a jab before I go. I'm sorry. I'm wearing it regardless. People are gonna be like, you know what? I like that individual. People are gonna be jealous of you. Sometimes people tell you to come off the straight path because what? They can be what you are in life. What does the Quran He says, uh, that the people who all their desires, they want you to be like them. They see you coming to the mosque for them. They see you reading hijab and naqab and jibab, sister. So they try to make you feel bad on why you're doing those things. But then you go, but then you, you, you go to the mosque infected, right? Don't try to fool us. I know who you are. Sister, are you wearing hijab because of Ramadan? I know you two weeks ago before Ramadan, right? This is not you. Don't believe that. The people, because they don't have the guts and the ability to be like you, they will try to bring you down with them. And that one is the plan of Shaitan. They don't want, they, they're too jealous of you, so they want to bring you down. No matter where you go, doesn't matter who it is. And a Muslim is someone that has the answer. And the reason is, it doesn't matter who walks in the room. Whether it be the president of America or any president or any bishop or someone that has a blue check on Instagram, it's not who it is. You show that what? I'm Muslim. I have status for myself. We live in a culture where you always need to feel your confidence. I have to be humble. As a Muslim, you have, you have shut off and it is in your Islam. Tell me what? I don't do this. Why? I'm a Muslim. You don't do this? La, I'm a Muslim. Right? People are chasing a celebrity. Nah, I don't do that. Why? I'm a Muslim. Don't be a follower, don't be like, like sheep, like flock. Where everyone goes, you go. If everyone does good, I'm doing good. If everyone does bad, I'm doing bad. La wallah. You do good regardless. When people follow you, people are against you. But that is the true value of a Muslim. That wherever you go, you keep your values with you. Whether you're in America, whether you're back home, whether you're not in the country, whether you are the one Muslim in your environment, you keep the Islam with you. Sometimes it may be hard, I'll be honest, it might not be easy. Sometimes it's easy to be a Muslim. But regardless, you have to stick to your principles and to your, and to your values. Because people won't respect you. If you have no values and no morals, you'll go with the wind. Everyone's going left, you're going left. Everyone's going right, you're going right. And that's not how Muslim is. Muslim is balanced in the middle. Right? And follow the way of the Sahaba, the companions in itself. Right? And that's how we should be as Muslim. <coughs> So Alhamdulillah, after Tarweeh prayer, we went to go get some groceries for the fam. And always going in, saying your uthqar before you go into the supermarket. And here's my brother come being a funny guy over here, pointing at the snacks. And I'm looking, the, thinking like something serious. And then I'm like, aw, me. And then it was like, it was kind of nice. Obviously, being around with your siblings and being around people who know you so well, it's fun to joke around. You know, obviously going to the, the giant at late night is always the best when no one's there. You're kind of cruising around, having a good time. And yeah, it was just nice because sometimes like you'll realize like spending time with people, you'll get to be yourself. It's just such a heartwarming experience but yeah people uh, some of the words of wisdom he has coming up for us because it was so funny and i was literally laughing so hard but yeah the lady was being so nice with us here because i was scanning the same item over and over again and he kept hitting forgot items so it's faster but here are some words of wisdom from alma now the real test is where do you put the cart well there's no consequence with not putting the cart back no legal reprimand you know you really find out what kind of person you are if you do or don't there's no reward for putting the car back either so uh, what kind of person are you so alhamdulillah after that i was just laughing so hard and it was really nice but then i had to you know get back to work because during ramadan literally your sleep schedule just becomes complete bonkers so we'll just stay up sometimes until fag did and all 
tend to get a lot more work done when I'm like, you know, hydrated and I'm up and I'm at it. And I basically was just do making a bunch of basically shorts for TikTok and different platforms, obviously for the minor signs video that I had uploaded. And it took basically all night. But again, just, you can see Lily C one by one, just downloading each piece one by one and make sure they have caps and everything in between. Obviously talking to my brother, but thank you guys again for tuning in to another vlog. I really do appreciate the love, the support and make sure you leave comments down below. And then after I got hopped on a game, you know, just enjoyed some time with my brother. So yeah, hope you guys see the next one.